Joining me now, Cassidy Caron. She is the president of the Métis National Council. She met with the Pope. She joins us from Rome. And so does Anishinaabe journalist, columnist for the Globe and Mail, and author of the brilliant book Seven Fallen Feathers, Tanya Talaga. She's also been in Rome throughout the week. Both of you, a pleasure to have you. Um, I'm going to start with you, Cassidy Caron. Um, you met with the Pope. Uh, you were there throughout the week. What did the Friday apology of the Pope mean to you? So this, uh, this just adds one more step to the process. Uh, and, and I like the way that you, you phrased that because there, reconciliation is a journey. It is a long process. And this apology is one more step forward through that process. And uh, it really opens a door for us to continue down the pathway of reconciliation. Uh, of course, the apology is just words. And, and actions speak louder than words. And so for us, this is extremely meaningful. For me as an individual, it's meaningful because of the elders and the survivors who I've sat with for many, many hours before this trip preparing to come here. Those who said that this apology is needed to be able to move forward in their personal healing journeys. And uh, it means so, so much to our people. Uh, it means different things to many different people, but of course we look forward to the Pope coming to Canada and, uh, and hopefully delivering uh, a similar, if not stronger, apology to our survivors, to their families on our territory. Tanya Talaga was a long time coming. Um, and, and, I, and I don't want to undermine how important it was. What did you take away from it and, and what needs to happen now? You know, I echo um, Cassidy's words. This is just one step, one step. Um, there are many, many steps needed. You know, um, this now needs to be taken to Canada. Um, I am, applaud everyone for getting an apology and making sure that it actually did happen in Rome. I think that it was important that an apology took place, uh, you know, because we don't know when this will actually happen again. There is a commitment uh, by the pontiff to come to Canada, but, you know, we've we've heard promises before, and I think that when we're um, in the room, we have to grab that apology, and we have to take those steps mm. forward, because as Cassie said, now it's time to put that apology into action. Cassie, let me go back to you because there were many things on the list. Of course, the call to action, 58, was a public apology, but there's also calls for compensation, no word on that. There was also calls to turn over records, no action on that. There was also calls for um, trying to urge an, a, a French national priest who'd been accused of sexual, assault, uh, sexual uh, abuse to come to Canada to face charges, no action on that. Are you surprised by that? Um, I'm, I'm not surprised by that because there's a lot of work that has to be done in order for those actions to occur. I think today, like, er, er, the, the apology was, was that first step. And between now and the Pope's visit to Canada, he's going to be able to sit with the amount of the, the asks, the, the requests, the demands that we have all brought to him this week. He can consider them. The apology that took place was, was so much more than just, I'm sorry. There were what I understand as, as really as marching orders for the, the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops, the bishops who are on the ground in Canada. They now have direction from the Pope to be able to move towards action. And uh, you spoke about, about the records. Um, so the, the meetings with Pope Francis weren't the only meetings that I came here to do. I came here and I met with cardinals in charge of different areas of the Catholic Church as well, um, including the Cardinal Secretary of State, including the Cardinal in charge of the bishops, and including the Superior General of the Mary Immaculate Oblites, who have a number of our records that we need to be able to continue to tell our stories. And so we did actually come out of these meetings with a lot of different outcomes, a lot of different follow-ups. So once we return back to Canada, that's when a lot of this work is actually going to begin. And I have a good feeling that a lot of action will come from the apology between now and when the Pope visits and then also following because we will be holding them accountable and we will continue to be doing this work. Tanya uh, Talaga, look, um, 
let's just go back to 2006, the residential school settlement agreement. The Catholic Church then was supposed to pay about $60 million legally agreed upon. They only ended up raising um, $3.7 million. Now they, they, the Catholic bishops in Canada want to raise $30 million. But is there, how important is that to get done soon? How important, for example, is the call to return all land given to run residential institutions back to First Nations? Of course. I mean, we have to we have to start from a good place. And starting from a good place would be to go back to 2006, would be go to back and to pay. The Catholic Church should pay the $25 million that it is owed. You mentioned that they've only paid, you know, $3.7 million so far. I mean, my goodness, imagine that. After 150,000 of our children attended these so-called schools from the mid-1800s to 1996, the majority of those schools were run by the Roman Catholic Church. You know, it is so incredibly important that restitution start happening, and the Catholic Church should be paying that. And why are they going to raise money? You know, $30 million. I think they probably have it there. You know, um, open up the wallet and pay the money mm -hmm. out. I think that that would go a long way. Just last quick question, um, Cassidy. The Vatican, does, do you believe the Vatican should appoint an independent investigator to come up with some kind of enforceable actions on the abuse that happened in the residential institutions? Absolutely. That is one of the positions that we've put forward from the Métis National Council is that there should be an independent investigator to be able to help us really seek justice and, and implement justice for our people, for our survivors who are still with us today and for our future generations to know that when something is, is wrong and, and you tell the truth, mm -hmm. that something will be done. That is very important to us in, in moving forward. And Tanya, last question to you. It was an emotional week in Rome for, for everybody, and a powerful one. Is there, is there one thing that struck you that, that maybe people who were not in Rome, a moment that you carry with you, Tanya? Yes, and it's a, it's a moment that, um, thanks to Cassidy Carroll, has been brought forward to us. You know, it's not often that you see Métis, First Nation, and Inuit together pushing for the same thing, our leadership pushing for the same goals. And here we were in a foreign country, here we are in Rome, all together in front of the Roman Catholic Church that has caused so much pain for all of our peoples for 500 years. You know, the one thing that I think is so positive out of this experience is unity and the strength of what we can do together. That's beautiful. Uh, it's been, it's, I think the echoes of this are just beginning to be felt. Uh, I, Cassidy, uh, Caron, Tanya Talaga, um, I really appreciate you sharing your, your, your experience and your views on this. Thank you so much. Miigwech. Thank you so much.